The MP5 is arguably one of the most iconic firearms to ever be produced. From film and TV to video games, from SWAT work in LA to British SAS raids across the world, this subgun has been there and done that and then some. Even after almost 70 years of production, the HK MP5 remains one of the most trusted submachine guns in the world. But if you clicked on this video, you already knew that. I'm here to talk about the MP5's little cousin, if you will, the MKE AP5. In the mid 70s, HK was updating the MP5 for what at the time were modern challenges. One of the major challenges was making a subgun for the US Navy's Special Operations Command that could fire 10mm auto. Their solution was to simply take an MP5 and beef up the trunnion. This became the MP5 A3 and left HK with all of the A2 tooling sitting around and collecting dust. That's where the Turks came in. Turkey was in an interesting place politically at the time, as they did not follow many of the Western sanctions that Germany and the rest of the free world had to abide by when selling military equipment. So, somewhere like Iran could buy weapons from Turkey, even if the rest of the West was banning all exports to the nation. MKE in Turkey promptly purchased all of the A2 tooling and with the help of German engineers began producing old MP5s exactly to old spec. From the early 80s onward, MKE would sell these cheaper MP5s to police departments and private companies alike around the world. Today, the AP5 and smaller AP5P are imported into the United States as handguns by Sentry Arms. They are not only an affordable option compared to the German-made SP5 contemporaries, but also the most unbutchered MP5 you can buy. These guns all start life as machine guns. Thus, they have a full auto trigger pack and a two pin receiver. To be compliant with ATF regulations, a piece of metal is welded into the rear of the receiver to stop a full auto bolt carrier from being placed in the gun. The original bolt carrier is also altered so as to not allow it to interface with an auto sear trip lever. Aside from those small changes, these are the same submachine guns that MKE sells to SWAT teams around the world. The packaging is quite nice in my opinion. Every gun comes with a small case from the factory. Included in the case is a cleaning kit, a flash hider, a manual, a chamber flag, a 30 round magazine, and a sling. I have not only the full size, but the smaller K model as well. I purchased my MP5K as a minimalist pack for a large discount and was delighted to see that it still came with a case and chamber flag. The flags were different colors with the two firearms, but identical in construction. This attention to detail was nice compared to most guns today, where you are lucky if you even get a sticker in the box. The AP5 comes with the original slim style handguard and old A2 style trigger housing. I had a very specific look and feel in mind for my pistol, so I quickly added a German wide forend as well as a German SEF trigger housing off a G3 rifle. One of the very cool things about these German roller delayed blowback guns from HK is that most of the parts are completely interchangeable, even across different cartridges. So a stock or end cap off of a 5.56 HK33 will be completely compatible with an MP5 and 9mm. And with a Dremel and some patience, you can easily hand fit parts from even the full size G3 main battle rifle onto your little 9mm subgun. These guns come from the factory really dry and need to be lubed up heavily to run reliably. I completely stripped my gun and pulled apart the entire trigger group the day I bought it. I sprayed every part with a healthy amount of AutoZone brake cleaner to remove all the Cosmoline. After that came plenty of hops number 9 and a quick reassembly. Going to the range for the first time with an MP5 style handgun is fantastic. Everyone there will recognize it and almost every trip somebody asks me to shoot it which I don't mind at all. The first time I shot it with just the end cap installed. I'd shot many 9 mils up to this point, but I was still blown away at the complete lack of recoil. Shortly after that, I purchased a Magpul collapsible handgun brace, and this took my AP5 from one of my favorite range toys to one of the most practical guns I own. There's definitely a break-in period with these guns, and ammo type really matters. These guns absolutely hate hollow points. If you want to pay upwards of 80 bucks per mag, I've been able to successfully run Winchester 155 grain hollow points through German magazines, but I have not been able to do so with Turkish magazines. 
The AP5 also runs very dirty. This is the kind of gun that you should thoroughly clean after each range trip, even if it's only one magazine. But with proper cleaning and maintenance, these guns can run extremely well. Once you get an MP5 or two, a suppressor is the only way forward. My AP5 was my number one motivation when buying a suppressor, and it was completely worth it. With 147 grain subsonic loads, you reach an almost Hollywood level of quiet. You can hear the impact of every bullet on paper, and there's no need for hearing protection. One of the coolest shooting experiences you can have for sure. Overall, I would definitely recommend that anyone who wants to get into the world of MP5s pick up an MKE. For the price, you just can't beat them, and all the little extras that come with them are a nice touch. If I had not seen one of these for sale at my local gun store and picked it up on a whim one day, I may have never cared to learn anything about the history and huge collector scene behind the MP5. But ever since driving home from Northern Security and opening up that case with my buddies, I've been hooked. Thanks for watching. If you want me to review any weird or obscure guns or gadgets in the future, please let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I have some big projects brewing right now, so stay tuned. I'll catch you next time.